Hello and welcome to my video about the A8 Anet 3D printer. This is a printer I picked up for under £200, delivered to the UK with two filaments. A couple of concerns, obviously uh, the cheapness means what sort of quality control have we got and it's made from acrylic which has its problems shall we say. Anyway, uh, this is my first ever 3D printer, so let's get cracking and see how I do at assembling this cheap Chinese printer. Now as you can see, um, you get a nice box that should keep most things pretty secure, including this rather naff uh, cable. More of that later. And uh, some electronics, a simple set of instructions, a load of little bits and pieces. Uh, including what uh, looks like MDF but is actually uh, not a USB stick adapter for the SD card which is uh, got most of the stuff on so that's good and a load of cables has uh, been waving away at there but uh, yeah this little box is what makes it all happen and uh, yes uh, a load of other bits scattered over on the other side here including the metal bars which are pretty important and a power supply uh, in this mystery box Stepper motors are uh, looking quite nice, nicely labelled as well, so assembly should be easy. Now this bit here, this is going to be the bit that makes it tricky to assemble the kit, because it, whilst it would be quite simple, as you can see it's got those weird T-nuts uh, uh, you know, attachments which are quite fiddly, and they're definitely going to be an issue for assembling the unit. So USB stick has a load of instructions on, which are definitely worth checking out. But you've also got some assembly videos, which um, I actually use to assemble the kit, but they're, they're not the best way of doing it, to be honest. And there are potentially some very useful bits on the Facebook page and in the assembly instructions for some of the trickier bits I came across when assembling. Now, this is going to take a while to sort out. Right, that PSU. Notice a load of screws missing from the correct locations that I'm indicating here. Um, does make me worry about the fact that you were rattling around inside the case and this unit being a safety feature, you know, if that's damaged. Obviously I'm very concerned as to what could happen, uh, including the rumours of exploding and killing, what is it, 12 year olds I think it is. Anyway, um, yeah, that, that will uh, be an issue a bit later on. Some tools uh, come supplied with the kit. In fact, everything you need to supply the kit is pretty much included in the box, so it's really good from that point of view, including these weird little balloon rubbery things, which I still haven't worked out what they are. I probably need to reread uh, any instruction manuals that are on that little USB uh, adapter. Anyway, as you can see, I've made a good start at assembling my printer here and uh, located a load of M3 screws and uh, I'll be showing you some nuts very shortly. There they are. And um, yeah, there's quite a few of those. You get a couple of extras, which is good because I had about three damaged. And as you can see, uh, with the T-nut, the bolt comes in from the top and locks into the nut in the horizontal slot and it's got to grip the acrylic, which uh, is not easy and uh, I'm about to demonstrate how fiddly it is. So as you can see, this is where you need to get your bolt into. comes in via the little wiggly finger in the bottom left hand corner there and you've got to try and squeeze a nut into that little slot which uh, with my fat fingers is not the um, the best option shall we say. Um, using some pliers was a possibility and in some spots that works really well in others not so good and uh, as uh, I'm hopefully about to demonstrate. Yeah, it's not not easy, is it? Um, it? It is possible to put them in before you assemble the pieces, but the problem is when you click the pieces together, it can often knock the nut out. Uh, obviously, I was able to work around it. Uh, I actually re-recorded the audio. Now, here is a big problem. Notice hole number one, hole number two, hole number three. Yeah. Hole number two should also be over here, hole number four. So assembling this piece is um, not really going to be possible. So I can fit the smooth bars, they go in the top two holes, but the um, threaded bolted uh, piece is um, not going to go here because there's no hole. So I am going to try and drill a hole in to get around this and 
guess I'm going to have to put a claim in to try and get a replacement piece because I don't really have an ideal solution for dealing with this. Uh, without this piece, I can't actually assemble the printer properly. Um, so, yeah, major concern. Um, there is some 3D options I think you can print out to uh, replace the end plate, but obviously you need the printer to be assembled to do that. As you can see, there are little cutouts that have popped out. How quality control missed a missing hole there? Well, yeah, China sometimes gets accused of having no quality control on the cheaper parts. As you can see, here is my bodged assembly. I basically managed to drill a hole. Uh, it did snap off the top lug, but I've been able to get a printer to work by gripping on. But um, it's not ideal. Not ideal at all, in fact. So a bit concerned about this piece here. So, yeah, if that breaks free, it's it, it could be bad. Anyway, um, next job, get the motors in, get the threaded bolts in, get the LCD screen in. But as you can see, print goes together pretty well. And here's a still shot of that damaged piece, which uh, I'm going to use for my uh, claim. Now, when it comes to assembling this bit, as you can see, I've popped in the uh, little bolt for putting your uh, threaded uh, plastic uh, piece in. Uh, brain has stopped working as to what that's called. And it does appear from the photos in the YouTube video uh, that it goes four down and has two nuts. Uh, that is actually in error. I'm going to throw up a screenshot of uh, where it should be, which is in the PDF. Uh, but yeah, it's not very clear how you're meant to assemble this from the videos. This is how you're meant to assemble it. And that's how I've got it now. And uh, obviously it's very important that you get all your uh, bits and pieces in place. Now, as you can see here, I'm just demonstrating how you can easily get to the various bits and pieces to tighten everything up. And it's a nice little design feature. But um, yeah, this set of bolts here are not really quite in the right place to uh, assemble it properly. So I will uh, be moving that a bit later on. Uh, to get my printer working correctly and I have to say despite some little issues around assembly it did go together pretty easily um, I believe it's seven hours in total from opening the box to ready to print um, obviously there was quite a bit of fiddling and I guess I've been fiddling with it since uh, printing to try and get the best quality and minimize jams and I did have a bit of excitement with my heater block uh, sensor dropping out so it just kept heating and heating and heating and started pouring smoke everywhere luckily i was able to turn everything off open the windows and sort it out now with regard to the belt um i'm not sure about the tension um it's quite strummy but actually still quite flexible and i'm not sure if i've cut its wrong length so you know if i've if i need to i could i guess move this belt up to the other axis which might help and my big concern is you know get in hold of replacement belts to you know, deal with stretched uh, plastic or um, stuff that I've cut to the wrong length. But um, it seems to be working pretty well on the assembled unit. And I'm going to cut now to an issue I had. Remember that European power plug with the adapter? Well, when I plugged it in, this unit I thought was dead because of the missing screws. A very loud bang happened when I plugged it in, but I was suspicious of this cable, and I was thinking, well, getting this replaced is going to be an absolute nightmare. I maybe should test the cable, because, I don't know, I just had a sneaky suspicion it wasn't working, so a power plug was sacrificed, and as you can see, it's all hooked up, ready to go. This is quite late at night now. This is probably about 10 hours after I started uh, trying to assemble it. I just decided, well, let's give it a go. It, it, if it's dead, it's dead. And, you know, I might have killed the motherboard already. And whoopee! It actually powered up and, as you can see, started printing. Now, it's actually printing, I believe, a 10 mil cube at the moment. But I did have a problem with the height adjustment. And, as you can see bit later on did some more printing uh, I think this is a set of tentacles off a Kickstarter I've backed just checking out how good the print resolution is uh, I've basically got an LED torch illuminating it to uh, try and get some light so when you see all these people plugging in lights uh, it's quite useful 
And what's this? Oh yes, this is a, a Bayam, I believe it's called. Um, anyway, the giant friendly robot from the animated film. And uh, I printed off a load of them at like 6 mil big just to check the printer was working. And I finally, on this one, actually went to about half size of the actual model. Printed out pretty good. Uh, you get the three little fingers on the wavy hand. And I'm not sure if this is before I attached a cable adapter. And this is me printing out the replacement fan unit, which is a little bit long. Um, so I had to actually adjust my heater um, to basically... Um, not have the fan dragging on parts all the time. It's still not 100% perfect, uh, I might need to adjust it. As you see a bit later on, um, starting to take shape quite nicely and a little bit of tape and you can just about see in the top of the picture here the um, kind of strain relief that I fitted to avoid any problems because um, you know it's going to help minimize cables getting damaged or more worryingly heater block uh, issues with the uh, thermostats or the actual heating element dropping out in the middle of a print which would be uh, potentially a big fire and not at all good and plus the smoke is probably not very good for you either. Um, I've actually run out of the masking tape so I've got thin strips and as you can see here this is almost done. Uh, it took quite a while to print this unit off. Ideally it would have stopped at this point because it actually keeps going add in some extra stuff uh, which is what makes it a bit longer it needs to be about two millimeters shorter by the looks of it um, after I adjusted the heated uh, end a bit to um, have a little bit of distance from the fan to where the kind of print bed is illuminated up to anyway uh, more tentacles uh, and a giant worm with my new uh, adapter fitted and um, yeah has made a bit of a difference so overall I'm reasonably impressed with this printer um, it's not perfect but it's not bad and you can probably uh, expect some more videos from me regarding uh, my printing obsession <laughs>